Great, so welcome back to grade seven math. We are now on chapter 4.4, which is using a table of values to find new patterns. What we're gonna be looking at is um, more difficult problems and how to use an easier problem to try to solve this. So if you wanna to turn to the textbook or if you wanna to turn to D2L and open up page 136 in the textbook, I'll read the problem aloud. At the TCDSB Volleyball Tournament, there are eight teams in a round robin competition format, which means one team plays all the other teams. How many total games will be played in the entire round robin tournament? Well, there's a couple of ways to approach this. You can always draw diagrams, you can use tree diagrams, you can use models to try to explain it. Um, but let's just see first, when we uh, to make a plan, we have to make sure, do we understand the problem? This is the first step in problem solving. So let's go through and eliminate all information that we don't think is relevant. So do we need to know that it's a TCDSV volleyball tournament? Not necessarily, we can remove that. What is important though is that there are eight teams. So we do know that there are eight teams in what we call a round robin uh, competition format. And we do need to understand what that means. That means one team will play all the other teams. So that means that there won't be separated into pools and there, you know, certain one team will only play a, a, a smaller number of games uh, and then there's playoffs. But in this case, everyone plays everybody else. So let's just write down the things that we know. So we understand that there are eight teams Let's just make this a little thicker. And then the second thing that we also know uh, is that in a round robin, you need two teams to play one game. It's a little bit obvious, but it also will help us break down what's important because it's asking how many games will be played. So we don't care about how many teams are playing in those games. We do care about just how many games in total. So in order to make a plan, what we need to do is make the problem simpler. So that means let's start by looking at how we can make this simpler. Well, we can't really make it simpler by looking at how they play the games. Two teams will always play one game. We can't really make that simpler. But what we can make simpler is this, the fact that there are eight teams. Well, why don't we start off a tournament where there is just one team instead? and figure out how many games that that one team would play. Well, if there's only one team in this tournament, and we know that we need at least two teams to play one game, then we know that we have zero games that we're going to be playing. It's a pretty boring tournament, if you say, if I say so myself. Then we let's continue in making this a little bit more challenging by including a second team. So with two teams, so if I have this team and this team, let me just join them to show one game makes a little smiley face there. There's only one game, A, play, A plays B. B doesn't have to play A anymore because they've already played each other. So this is a total of one game. Okay, so we've looked at the simplest example. This is always the simplest example is going down to one. Well, let's try to see if we can find a pattern. We have a zero games, one games, maybe we have a pattern. Well, let's look at three games, or sorry, three teams. Team A, Team B, and Team C. I'll just label them just so that we know what we're talking about. Team A will play Team B, Team B will play Team C, and Team A will play Team C. Those are the only combinations that I can have of those three teams. And the number of connections I have are three games. Given this, now we can make a table of values. So on the right hand side, let's make a table of values. And let's just make sure we put the right variables in the right place. Well, the left one is always the independent variable. This is what we can change or the term number. What responds to that, what will change because of that is the term value, which is dependent because it's dependent on the independent variable. Well, what are the things? What can we change? What did we change to make the simplest possible? And what we did change was the number of teams. So we were able to reduce it to the lowest possible number of teams. Well, instead of zero teams, let's start at one team. And then we looked at what changed because of that and what changed because of the number of teams is the number of games that those teams will play. If we only have one team, we have zero games. Then we continued and made it a little bit more challenging and we had two teams. Two teams played one game. Three teams, if we continue on, played a total of three games. 
So let's see if we can find a pattern here. Zero to one and then one to three. I'm kind of maybe seeing a pattern. I have zero plus one and then one plus two. Maybe we're starting to see a little bit of a pattern here. What we could do is let's carry on the carry out the plan and let's see if we can find the pattern by going to four teams and see if we can predict how many how many games will four teams play. Well, given this pattern, which was start at zero, add one, and then continue to add one more than the last time you did before, that means my prediction is to add three, and I should have six games if I have four teams. Well, let's try it out to see if it's correct. And then afterwards, we can see whether or not this pattern will hold. So we have four teams, A, B, C, and D. So this gets a little bit tricky now because we have to make sure all the connections are there. So A plays B, B plays C, C plays D. Then we have A plays C, and we have B plays D, and then we have A plays D. All the other possible combinations are just reversal. So D playing A is really the same as A playing D. So if we count the number of connections, one, two, three, four, five, six, we have a total of six games that they play. And that follows our pattern exactly. Great, so I think now that we have enough information, we can extrapolate, which means we can now predict for higher number of teams. So we have five, six, seven and eight teams and eight teams is what we were looking for for this uh, problem so if we continue this pattern the next the consecutive next consecutive number after three is four so six plus four is ten and then we continue the pattern plus five makes fifteen plus six makes twenty one and then plus seven makes twenty eight so let's just check to see if it makes sense. So check the answer that it makes sense. Well, does it make sense that 28 is the highest number? Yes, it does. Does it make sense that we're increasing every time we increase a number, another team? And it does because when you include another team, that team has the other people before it or from before. So if we added that eighth team now, that, so that's why we had to add that seven. So by looking at this, it kind of makes sense that my answer is 28 games. So eight teams will play a total of 28 games. So a couple of things when we look at the down rule, the down rule would have been start at zero and add one and then add one more each time that's one of them the cross rule is really tricky and maybe you could try to figure that one out on your uh, by yourself and we'll, i'll give the answer in class for that one so try to figure out the across rules and then try to write down the down rule on your in your own words so you're able to articulate it yourself once you're done that, we'll be looking at a couple of more examples in class. We'll be looking at number five, and then we'll, we'll be working on some more questions. So just to recap this lesson, when you're given a more difficult example, such as something with eight teams or eight, the eighth figure or the 10th figure, or the 12th figure, rather than looking at the 12th figure, go back to figure one, go back to the easiest possible problem, solve it with that one, and then make the problem easier by looking for a 